second video uh, for this motion analysis tutorial. Um, as you guys saw in the first part, we assessed and analyzed the movement of the clean and uh, squat jerk, and we got all the um, bits of information that we needed, or we set everything up in order to extract some of the useful information. Um, so there's two parts in the second video, which is to try and get the, the data to analyze. On the one side, we want to convert these knee joint angles um, to angles that we're more familiar with. Remember, everything in, in, in biomechanics is kind of given from the anatomical zero position, whereas these angles are not um, expressed in the same manner. In other words, here, full extension is given as 180, whereas based on anatomical zero position, everything should be zero uh, in the full extension position. So we'll work on that. The other part was to get the distance, the horizontal distance between the hip and the center of the bar. So what you can see here is this red line is just a measuring tape that gives us the direct distance from the center of the bar to the hip. Um, but in essence, that could be thought of as your resultant distance. And of this, we're interested in just the horizontal component um, between the bar and the hip at any instant in time. So we'll have to get that information somehow. So what's kind of cool is, you know, when on your um, graphs, there might be different bits of information plotted here. So just make sure that you select the bar to hip distance or whatever you called your measuring tape. And same thing here, the data table can display the data for uh, any of the points that we've assessed and analyzed. So just again, make sure that that's the bar to hip distance. And now we're gonna extract this information to Excel. So just make sure that the first three lines are highlighted. Oh, and just before I uh, do that, you see here that there's an angle component, which is really useful for us. In other words, what it's telling us is that this line is orientated at an angle to the horizontal. So it's saying at this point in time, it's angled at about 56.8 degrees. So that's going to obviously be really useful once you want to break that down into its component parts, um, for example, vertical or horizontal. So drag all the way down to the bottom, hold the shift button, and then click this last cell. Then press Control C to copy it, open an Excel document, go to the very top and press Control V to paste it. It might be in a different format, um, so oftentimes it's given in a general format like uh, so, or uh, it might be given in scientific format, which I think for most of you it might be in this kind of a format when you paste it in initially. So let's make sure either up here on the Home tab in the ribbon that you select uh, Number, or alternatively, you can just right click once you've pasted it, go to Format Cells, and then when you go to Number, press, uh, or when you go to Category, just press Number. Okay, so there's there's different ways to do it. Uh, I prefer the quick quick way. It'll give us give it to us in a format that I'm used to. Um, we're going to create a new column. We'll call it Horizontal to imply the horizontal distance that we're trying to calculate. Now, if you remember from the trig side of things, to get the horizontal component of a resultant, you'll use the cosine function. So the thing to remember with Excel is Excel um, can calculate the angle, but the angles are given in uh, radians. So since we've got degrees here, we have to, go to, we have to actually convert the degrees into radians and then use the cosine to find the relative length. So we'll just press equals, we'll do cosine, open bracket, uh, then we'll press radians, uh, enter radians, again open bracket, then press this cell over here, since that's the degrees we're trying to convert to radians, close bracket, close bracket. We're not done yet. In other words, this is just going to give us, or it's just converting this in essence um, to degrees and giving us the inverse cosine of that. We have to multiply it by the length of the resultant. Um, so we're just going to press uh, or highlight that specific column, then press shift and the number eight. You need that little um, star sign over there to indicate the multiplication. So it'll be that multiplied by the uh, cosine of that angle. All right, then you can press tab or enter or whatever. So this is the relative length. This is the horizontal length of this component at that instant in time. Um, <coughs> you don't have to retype any of this, just in the cell, 
go to the bottom right hand component until the sign uh, of the cursor changes to a solid plus and then just double click and it's going to auto fill it all the way to the bottom nice and easy all right so let's just uh, maybe graph that and see what it looks like so in essence what we're going to do is uh, we're going to highlight the time press and hold control shift and then press the down arrow then press and hold control to select this then press shift while you're still holding the control and press the up arrow it'll take you all the way to the top then just hold shift and press down to make sure that this is an equal number or you can do it manually whichever one is fine for you then go to insert and then select the scatter plot okay um, we're just going to select the dots for now uh, you can select just the lines it doesn't really matter um, I kind of prefer it in this format for now you can always change it later on if you don't like it um, okay so here we can see that uh, the time is displayed at the bottom I'm just gonna make that abundantly clear click on the graph um, then click add chart element uh, the axis primary horizontal axis is time and we're entering it in seconds so you can just see I'm entering the uh, label over here press enter and it automatically puts it in there for us the same thing for the vertical axis um, this is the horizontal uh, distance and that's measured in meters press enter okay just so we would know um, very clearly what's going on uh, I'm going to delete that title and we'll come and edit this in a second so what we can see here is it reaches a minimum horizontal distance in other words the bar reaches a minimum horizontal distance to that hip uh, marker at two specific points now it's just a matter of trying to find out <coughs> um, during the specific phases of the lift which one of these coincides with what you can always go back to your video <coughs> down here there's a timing option um, you can display the time it's typically given in frames but what we can do is convert that into a time variable <coughs> excuse me so when I play the video now I want to find out during which point in time was the bar the closest to the hip you can see here the horizontal distance would be quite large and it's coming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and in essence when the bar is making contact I want to find out that instant in time uh, so around about here is when the bar would be making contact with the hip that's about <coughs> excuse me, 0.65 seconds into the movement so when I go back to the Excel page, <coughs> when, I <coughs> excuse me, when I go to 0.65 at the bottom here, you can see that the distance there was about 17 centimeters. All right, so I want to make that a little bit more clear. So what I'll do is I'm going to highlight all of this, just make the background color white. I'm going to then highlight all of this, press Control Shift down, and just tabulate that just to make it look a little bit neater. But now I'm going to do something that I tend to find quite interesting um, to make it clear at what point in time the horizontal distance was any specific value so you guys will need to include something in your Excel template um, that I have up here in my ribbon which is called a developer uh, if I press on that and I click on insert and there's this option over here which is called a scroll bar I'm gonna insert that just below the graph um, if you don't have developer, how do you get it? You, prick, you press um, the file option. You go to options. Then um, over here, you go to customize ribbon. And then these main tabs option here, if you scroll down, there should be a developer code that will, for you guys, most likely be unchecked. So just make sure you check that. And then press OK. And it should appear in your ribbon. Um, OK. So what does this do? It doesn't do anything yet. We're going to have to program it um, with some basic stuff. Um, in essence, what I want to do is every time that I press left or right, uh, there'll be something in the graph that can move left or right. That'll tell me at any point in time what the horizontal distance was at that specific point in time. So how do I go about doing that? Well, if I right click on here and I say format control, uh, just make sure you're in the control option over here. I'm going to link um, this particular scroll bar to a cell. I'm going to link it to this cell over here. It's just any random cell for now. Um, and then I'll press enter. 
uh, the maximum value in here should be the number the maximum number of rows that you have in here I checked mine and it's about 450 so I can just put 450 in there I wanted to increment by one each time um, and that's about it now I press OK so what you'll see now is if I press left or right uh, there's a number here that increments and that's cool it's kind of useless at the moment which it doesn't do anything but I want to link this um, number to the time side of things, right? So you can see a seven, that would be like maybe the seventh row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Maybe you can do something along those lines. So what I'm going to do at this point in time, I'm going to say this neighboring cell is equal to that cell divided by a hundred, since my um, frame rate was a hundred frames per second. So you'll see here now that's 0 0.07, which kind of coincides with the numbers that I have in here. So if I press left and right, I can get to 0 and all the way up. So that's looking kind of promising. Uh, the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to ascribe X and Y values. Um, do something X and Y values to get me the X coordinates and the Y coordinates for this graph. Okay, so what I'm going to initially do just at uh, the baseline, baseline level is I'm going to search for the corresponding Y value when the time is uh, this particular number. So I'm going to enter a formula which is equals uh, lookup, um, press shift, then I'm going to say look up this particular value and you can see here the formula gives us some clues what to do. Look up this particular value, comma, in this range, so I just press there uh, in that first cell, press and hold uh, control shift and then the down arrow to highlight all the cells, then press comma again. It's going to say look for that particular cell within this range and when you find it give me a result and the result that I want is these horizontal values. Again you can press control shift in the up arrow and then just hold the shift button and press down once just to make sure that you don't include this uh, horizontal um, name and then close that off and now what you'll see is that when the in essence the time is 0 0.09 um, let me actually move this over here to make that the y value and I'll move this down here to make that the x value in essence when the time is 0 0.09 then the y value should be 0 0.37 so if I check that down here 0 0.09 then the y value should be 0, 0.37 so that's looking cool so now every time that I press left and right you'll see that that increments and it will find the corresponding horizontal distance at that specific point in time um, <coughs> okay so that's great so uh, I still need this I don't I mustn't delete that what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to enter time and I'm going to enter um, horizontal well, I'll just make it a uh, distance uh, in the x direction. So what I'll do is I'll highlight, I'll highlight that x, right click, format cells, and subscript it. So it looks like that. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to drag these up here. So at any given point in time, um, the horizontal distance is that. So now what I want to do is kind of be able to reflect that within this um, within this graph. So I'm going to create a vertical line first. So a vertical line will have an origin here at a specific time value and at that specific time value the y uh, distance is zero and then at that same time uh, it must have a second y value that corresponds to the vertical uh, or, yeah, the, the y-axis. So <coughs> at a specific point in time, I'll say the x value must equal whatever the time value is that I chose over here, and the corresponding y value at that point in time must be zero. And then a s second dot, and you'll see why this makes sense in a second, I'll say equals use that same time value, but at that point in time, I want the y axis value, which is obviously this value over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the graph, I'm going to say select data, and I'm going to add 
these values in and I'll call this the vertical uh, line so the x values must just be these two and the y values must be these two then press enter and OK and click OK so what you see now is two dots over here um, so that doesn't look like anything yet so what I'll do is I'm gonna click that uh, hang on, let me just click on the graph so click on that double click uh, format the options I'm gonna make it a solid line um, for some reason it's not working there sorry let's press ctrl Z so and again I want to make sure that that's highlighted format series solid line so now there should be a solid line connecting these two dots I don't like it so thick I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner and then I'm gonna make it a dotted line alright um, I'm not going to get rid of these markers yet. You'll see what I'll do with that in a second. I'm going to close it. Now I want a uh, horizontal line as well. So the horizontal line uh, is also going to have x, y coordinates. Now um, there will be an initial uh, value which I want at x is equal to 0 and then the corresponding y value. And then it must also intersect over here where x is the timestamp and then the y values they're going to be the same okay so I'm going to say x is equal to 0 then the y value is equal to uh, the y axis at that point in time and then that's the second dot is at some time later and I want that same um, y coordinate okay so now I'm going to add that to the graph I'm going to say add this horizontal line again just highlight these uh, X and Y coordinates press enter and OK and click OK so you see now there's two new dots up here so I'm going to double click them uh, I'm going to format that uh, again I'm going to fill it make it a thinner line that's also dotted and then with this particular one what I'm going to do is when I double click these dots and I format it format the markers and I don't actually want to see those markers there at all okay but what I want to see is um, this marker here um, as it moves so what you can see now is that as I move this scroll bar uh, the lines coincide right you can see that the lines here move uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to put this on a secondary axis so it will ask you do I want it on the primary axis or secondary axis I want it on the secondary axis and what you'll notice now is like it's not going to coincide anymore because this horizontal axis doesn't coincide with this horizontal axis so I'm going to make it coincide I'm going to say this one over here double click it go to axis options and then the maximum make this maximum the same as that maximum it's 0 0.45 and then press enter now you'll see it'll coincide quite quite nicely uh, I just don't like the second dot down here so when I click on it once and I click on it again I can double click it and then I go to uh, this full and line options marker marker options and I want none for that one alright so it's just gonna keep that top one there for me um, okay so that looks quite nice now so now every single time that I move uh, you'll see how that m specific marker moves so you'll know exactly where on the graph you are at a corresponding time and what the height is uh, at that instant and in other words since the height coincides with the horizontal distance you'll know what that is specifically uh, I don't like this stuff here you can't delete it so just hide it behind the graph and same thing with this over here just hide it behind the graph um, then I can make this look a little bit nicer just bring it in the middle over here and then I can just put some borders around it and just change the color there we go um, I don't quite like this graph so I'll just delete these horizontal lines I'll delete these vertical lines then I'll just click um, in the graph right click uh, the outline I'm going to change to black same thing here 
uh, going to change the outline to black and then the same thing on this axis change the outline to black um, and same thing over here I can actually delete this axis now and then I don't want that outline of the graph here so I'm going to just outline and have no outline uh, and that to me looks a little bit it looks a little bit nicer if you want to shift this around um, you always have to right click it so that it highlights it this way uh, you can if you want to always make it smaller you can make it a little bit fatter uh, it's all totally customizable and you'll just see here now if you want to go across that's fine remember we set it to increment at one unit every click uh, if you click anywhere in here it's going to go up by 10 units and it's going to do slightly bigger jumps you can also you can customize that to whatever you want to so I'm just interested in this uh, second drop over here so I want to get uh, quite a precise one so at that instant in time 2.36 uh, seconds into the movement so we can use the units here as well that's in meters the bar was um, about 10 centimeters away from the body but what you'll find is if I go back to the video that's most likely going to be when the bar is over my head so about two seconds into the movement uh, if I just keep playing this you can see here the horizontal distance would obviously increase it's going to decrease again as um, I catch it. It's going to obviously move closer to the bar. Uh, not close enough yet. Obviously, person's going to stand up again. And then uh, I think you'll get the point that once a person starts um, jerking it over the head, the bar is obviously going to be much more closely aligned uh, to the hip. Okay. So the key thing is you can repeat all of this stuff. This is the distance of the bar to the hip. We can do the same thing bar to the knee. Um, in essence, we're trying to find out why is there a sticking point, and that might be a reason. It may have something to do with the distance that the bar is to the hip or the distance that the bar is to the knee. So you'll have to investigate that, repeat the process for the knee. Um, the only other thing that I want to show you is how do we get this knee joint uh, information. So over here, uh, select the knee joint that's now going to be this angle over here uh, again go to the very beginning we have the time and the angle um, remember highlight both of those click and drag down hold the shift button and click the bottom cell then press ctrl C go back to your Excel document go right to the top and then over here press ctrl V uh, again you'll see it's in scientific format uh, I'm just going to change it to the number format and there it is in a manner that we're familiar with. Here all I'm going to do is uh, enter a simple formula which is just 180 minus whatever that angle is. So I'm just flipping it around and then double click the bottom right hand corner to auto fill it. So this is now the corrected angle. In other words if I go back to the video in essence when I'm over here fully locked out this should be uh, this should be zero or at this point in time the knee should be flexed by 10 degrees not 170 degrees so then as I start going down um, if this was me squatting down at this point in time you'd want to see that at uh, about 90 degrees or we want to actually find out is it 90 degrees so the angles that are given here aren't quite uh, in accordance to what we're used to so now we can now we can see what the corrected version is. So at this instant in time, 1.55 seconds into the movement, uh, I can kind of just scroll down to 1.55 and find out what that uh, angle is. So you can see here that the individual is at 104 degrees uh, at the knee, right? So it's below parallel for sure. So again, this is how you make sure that it's anatomically specific to the person, okay? Um, go through the same process of making this kind of a graph but for this information okay again you can use uh, see if you can insert this kind of a scroll bar and calculate those distances and the same kind of thing with adding these horizontal and vertical lines um, that's the kind of information then that you'll put into your write-up uh, if that makes sense all right that's pretty much it sorry for the long video but as you can see there's a lot of technical elements in it all right see you guys